Hello again, Kendopolis. This is Dr. Kendo, and we're here with another Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor commentary. This is where I create your favorite characters in the Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor, which is only on the Wii U and PC versions of this game. And we're going to start off with Ryan Thorlaxon, I believe is how you would say that last name. One of the fifth cell developers, of course, in Scribble Knots Unlimited. If you're playing in Scribble Knots Unmasked, a lot of those fifth cell members do look pretty different, actually. And so, in that case, you would just want to go with anything from the DC villain libraries, any of that here or villain libraries, I should say, or any character that you know that kind of has this open jacket look. Now, uh, we're going to be creating Rick and Morty today, and so we're starting off with Rick, basically, is who we're creating. So anybody that you can imagine, you know, I encourage you guys to create these uh, characters by customizing them to however you would do it, you know. So just use my series kind of as an example of stamps you can use, design features that you can do, you know, like using Manta Ray right now, these fin pieces to be the uh, extra flaps on his lab coat right there. And so we've got a minus sign coming up next, and the minus sign we're going to use a few times, actually, but right now we're using it for the pant legs. Normally, Rick and Morty, you know, they're designed, uh, especially Rick, is very kind of tall and lanky. You know, they've got stretched out legs, kind of skinny looking, and arms as well. In Scribble Knots, the characters are, I guess by default, a little bit shorter, a little bit stockier and fatter and wider. Um, I, I sort of maintain that a little bit with my creations, but I sort of do an in-between, I guess you could say. And so so it's basically like if you took Rick and put him into the Scribble Knots universe, you know, this is what we're doing. Uh, we had Chalk to be those socks, you know, the design for his ankles and things like that, the shin area. But then below that, we did Shark Pup and took the bottom middle fin there in the back. And uh, now we've got Tempo. Tempo is one of Maxwell's many brothers. He's got a ton of brothers. And for those who don't know, Maxwell is the main kind of character in Scribble Knots with the little rooster hat. And so not only was that Tempo's front arm, but also the back arm, specifically the different uh, back arm. And now we've got Pool Girl, and we'll take the Pool Girl's back arm. This is sort of a stamp that I'll use generally when I want this arm-looking shape, but just a mostly straight, kind of rounded end shape. And so we're actually using that. It's going to be the neck. This is definitely going to need to be adjusted as we keep doing this creation and go on with making the head separately. we got a minus sign twice, actually, to be the belt. That's showing up amidst the uh, lab coat there that he's wearing, so it's kind of we shrunk it down pretty dang small right there. And so we've got cuttlefish, and you can take one of those arm antenna pieces of the cuttlefish, make it as small as you can, paint it all the way black, and it looks like his shirt being tucked in where his belt is right there. And I'm going to show you guys caffeine right now before we go into the properties editor, you know, for scripting and things like that. The caffeine is just to show you, hey, that makes like a kind of beer bottle looking uh, image, I guess, show up, that stamp. That's what we're going to use as kind of his projectile and a few things for Rick here, so just thought you guys should see that. Let's go ahead and talk about Rick and Morty, though. This is the properties editor where you can edit health and things, and this is where I talk about background information and fun facts about the characters that we create. So for anybody that somehow doesn't know, Rick and Morty is an American animated sitcom on Adult Swim. The series follows the misadventures of mad scientist Rick and his easily influenced grandson Morty, who split their time between domestic family life and interdimensional adventures. As we're creating Rick here right now, we'll just quickly say a little bit about him. He's extremely cynical and pessimistic and I'll add hilarious in there myself, but he's basically tall and lanky and is often burping or stammering mid-sentence, which is typically from him being drunk. As a scientist, he's genius, creating some of the most wild things you could imagine, and aside from the rapid cynicism, he also has quite a heavy criminal record. It would literally take too long to read all of it here, probably, so we'll just end off by switching gears and note that his relationship with Morty might be exploitative and demanding of him, but it does seem that he genuinely cares about Morty, even if he usually hesitates to show any love or appreciation. It's there. And so we are creating the head and the body separately. As I mentioned before, we're going to start off with the head as the source object and use amber as kind of the main shape. A troglodyte right now we're using kind of mainly for the hair, so you can put it behind that amber, you know, just layer it behind. And uh, of course, paint that hair kind of this grayish blue. We made it like a light blue, I guess, for this purpose. Circle is going to be for the eyes, so that's twice, of course. An octopus, we can take this tentacle piece that's bended with a pretty wide open angle bend in it. And so it looks like his unibrow, the pool girl back arm, once again, will be for the nose, because that's just a Ken, that stamp that's like a long, thin, I don't know, it represents the nose pretty well. Jellyfish, when you type that in, you can actually take this tentacle piece that's close to the jellyfish's body on either the left or the right side. It results in this black line looking shape, so that'll work out good. We used wart as the pupil within the eyes, and it's funny because if you see very close up, 
views of the pupils on Rick and Morty in the show, their pupils actually look more a little bit like an asterisk type shape or whatever. They're kind of crazy. But when they are further back, it generally looks like this, so we did just kind of do the wart as the pupil shape. Hemisphere was for the ear, and we've got a lot of jellyfish line tentacle pieces right now to be all these lines on his face, and I feel that that's a good way to make Rick is, you know, to, to make those lines and things. It shows that he's old, but also all the little detail in his facial expressions and his face right here. Uh, we got hair twice to kind of end off the creation. That's just to have hair peeking out towards the bottom, you know, closer down towards his neck, and uh, so that's looking good. Whenever you create a head and a body separately in this game, you do want to make sure that on the head object here in the properties editor, you go down to the equipment tab and it says can be worn on the face like glasses if you see that third circle on the bottom half of the screen. You know, there's those four circles. You want to fill in that third one. It says can be worn on the face like glasses and that'll work to mostly put the head where you want it. Now look at what happens. I'm actually going to get the head and the body if you wouldn't <laughs> knock it away. This is a level with anti-gravity right now. So Rick is all flying around. I did not intend for him to hit the head. But obviously you see now that they are connected. Once I gave the head to the body object, you can see that it does not look exactly right. Now it did at least put the head up where the head is supposed to go. It's just now we need to position it exactly where it should be. So with that, go ahead and edit the body object and press this button right here. It basically turns on the green grids. It's got Maxwell's head and a banana and a wheel and a dotted line all around that. It turns on all of those green grids. You can see that there's an empty green grid where the head is supposed to be. So you can actually click on that or tap on that if you're on the Wii U and that'll let you move it around with those arrows and things. And so you can actually move the head up down, left, right, wherever you feel it needs to go. Our head actually was a lot bigger than the body as well, so one thing we did was increase the size of his torso, or his body, I guess I should say, in general, the whole thing, and we moved the head a little bit higher and forward, which would mean to the right. So that's kind of the adjustments that we did. Again, it'll differ based on your creation and what uh, properties you've given it and how you've created it, all of that stuff. But anyway, we're gonna start off with Aaron Large as the source object coming up now. We got Mox after we removed the arms and the legs and the head of Aaron Large. Mox is one of Max well as many brothers as well, has a twin named Mix. We took the arms of Mix or Mox. You can use either one, of course. And so that's going to be for the sleeves and the arms right here for Morty, because that's who we're going to create now. You can't have Rick without his Morty, huh? And so we've got minus sign coming up next. The minus sign once again will have the same kind of purpose as before, as uh, we're going to use it for the legs. Now again, it's like one of those things I, I mentioned last time when we were creating the legs, is normally they would look like the legs and the arms would be a lot longer and taller and all of that. And Scribblenauts Unlimited, the world is a little bit different, so you've got to kind of adjust to the environment, I guess, of Scribblenauts Unlimited. You could kind of make a creation if you wanted to that had different pieces to the arms and legs, you know, more pieces, but that would ruin if you were going by my design. You wouldn't have enough stamp space, basically, if you're going by these designs specifically. I encourage you, of course, to create your own way and not knock anybody who creates their own way. And so the same thing with the chalk and the shark pup to be the ankles the socks and uh, the, the shoes right there. But we are going to be creating Morty as a single object. The reason for creating a head and a body separately is typically because you want to conserve stamp space or get the most out of the stamp space that you can. And so that's why we did Rick differently. Uh, Rick, I couldn't basically include the head on with our body object the way that we designed it. We would have easily run out of stamp space and we did on both of them. But here with Morty, we can actually include all of the stamps that we need and still create him accurately. So a circle was the head, fingernail for the nose, octopus tentacle piece right now. It has a slight bend in it. That's for his mouth. And uh, so with that whole what I was just talking about, um, wait, we got a snowball as the hair. I don't want to forget about that. Scribble Knots Unlimited, though, it does have a limited amount of stamp space. I know it's it's called Unlimited, but it's limited. Um, so basically a stamp is anything like this hemisphere that we're typing in to get the ear for Morty or the snowball hair. Any of those little pieces that we put on to create our object overall, those are all, each one of those is a stamp and you do have a limit to how many you can put down. So that's the only reason, you know, hey, we created the head and the body separately for Rick. And uh, Pimple is going to be for each of the teeth of Morty right here. We've got his eyes to be circled just like Rick before. And uh, we'll paint those circles, of course, all the way white right here. And it's okay to make them kind of going a little bit off the face. If you actually see how Rick and Morty are drawn in the cartoon, their eyes do kind of go a little bit off of the face, more specifically that eye to our right side. So if it looks like it's kind of breaching the edge 
edges of that circle, that's the reason. Jellyfish tentacle pieces, those line shapes are for the eyebrows, and that'll do it with the warts as the pupils. Let's go ahead and read about Morty since we're here. Of course, Morty is short for Mortimer, and he's the grandson of Rick, who we mentioned before. He's a young and generally good-natured teenager who can be somewhat easily manipulated, I would say. There are just so many facial expressions that we could have done for these characters, as is often the case in this game, since Scribblenauts basically requires a static face. I decided to make Morty here with a face like, uh, it's kind of like, uh, blind, dumbfounded interest and good-hearted attitude, while Rick, of course, we can see was created earlier with more of a meh face and almost having a frown. And so these are the characters right here. I really enjoy how they turned out. I hope you guys did too. Hilarious show. I know it's a little bit more on the adult side and a lot of my audience comes from the kid side, but it's all in the requests. You guys, uh, you did request this. So whatever is most popular, most requested each week is what gets made. And it's kind of like, I guess, when you guys asked for Deadpool and Suicide Squad, you know, we're not always making the uh, just the family friendly shows and movies and stuff. It's whatever you guys request. I would would say within reason. But yes, I upload every weekend, and I live stream on Twitch twice a week, at least Mondays, twitch.tv slash drkendo, and I will catch you guys on the next vid, and thanks for viewing. And sit down the road of twists and turns, always anxious to see what's within, we can look ahead to the point of no return, to the rest of our lives, it's a spectacle we give. Been down the road.